and I had a problem with my teeth. I had a crowded mouth. I went on the website and I found Dr. Thomas R. Gonzalez. Like I go to Vegas and this was the guy I needed to see. I have always had a fear of the dentist. And with me having a fear of dentists, neglect of the teeth came. And I started to lose confidence in my smile, etc. So when I came over and visited him, it's Dr. Gonzalez is like um, God's gift to dentistry. He knew I was fearful of the dentist and I went with the blue pill. And it's, it's all she wrote. I woke up this brilliant smile. From the minute I met Dr. Gonzalez, um, <clears throat> I knew just the individual I wanted to work on my mouth. Like he, he, he was relaxed and it made me relax. Friends even told me I've lost weight. Like they, they, the smile creates an illusion. Like uh, the little tummy that I have, they, they, they do not see that. They see this brilliant smile so it makes me look slimmer. This guy has high tech, he knows his business. His, his staff, um, they just blow my mind every time I come and visit. You know, they're great people. Like they welcome you, you, you know, you're not just a patient, you're part of a family now. And that's what I like. Knowing what this gives people, knowing the, what this can bring to the patient, why don't more dentists do it? Well, number one, it takes an awful lot more of uh, training or education, and there's a lot more expense involved in doing it, too. And then you've got to get certified through the state boards. And then you have your insurance, pra insurance malpractice carriers you have to deal with, too. So all of those factors entered in. So um, what if all those factors enter in? If all of that's the same, and obviously it's no different for you than it would be any other dentist thing, why did you go through it to be able to offer it? Well, I saw a long time ago that I wanted to practice a different level of dentistry and I wanted to be able to give to my patients something more than the other dentist couldn't do. And I found by doing this, it put me in a different category where when I don't just sort of like have patients come in every half hour. I spend the time with these patients and I'm able to give them something that they can't get anywhere. I had some neck pain and I had, uh, naturally I'd uh, been ignoring my teeth uh, for years. And uh, Dr. Gonzalez told me that perhaps if I reshaped the, uh, my mouth in a way that only he would know how to do, that it probably would relieve some of my back pain, some of my neck pain, and I'll be darned if it didn't. I thought, what could the mouth and the jaw have to do with your neck and your back? And so I was a little skeptical. What we started with him was building up his bite first to find out where this jaw and this jaw lined up. Because he was having these neck pains, and, and, I, and I knew it had to do with more of what we call cervical issues or, or the neck issues. So what we did was we aligned the jaws that relaxed his muscles and enabled him to put his head in a more comfortable position. Also, it opened his airway. It made it so he could breathe easier, and that, that therefore allowing him to sit more erect. He doesn't know it, but that's what helped him out. He told me the benefits of implants, and I said, I don't want to go through anything that painful. I'd rather just take my teeth out every night and put them in a jar, <laughs> but uh, boy was I wrong. Came in, uh, took a little blue pill before I got here, said hi to the doc and to his uh, people that work here, including his wife Dee. The experience was relaxing. I was practically asleep before the surgery. When it was over, I remember seeing my wife. I remember driving home. I remember having two milkshakes in the car on the way home. I got home, I guess I took a nap. I woke up a couple hours later and I said, he didn't do it. I yelled to my wife, I said, Mary, what happened? He didn't do anything. She said I was crazy. I ran to the mirror and I looked and I had three teeth where I had a bridge that was driving me crazy for years never had a bit of pain, didn't have any swelling, waited for the onset of pain, nothing happened, had a great night's sleep that night, woke up in the morning still expecting pain, nothing. I was after Harvey to come in to get these implants then, but he didn't have enough space there to put them in. So I said, Harvey, we got to open your bite. And, and then he kept putting me off and putting me off and putting me off. And so I asked him, Harvey, what is the problem? So he tells me he's going to see an orthopedic surgeon. They're going to do some work on his neck. And I go, wait a minute. I said, come in, Harvey. Let me at least try this on you. I said, I know it'll help you. 
And he, like he said, he thought I was crazy. But we worked him up, we did a neuromuscular workup, we made him a fixed orthotic, put it in. Harvey comes back a month later. Harvey, how's your neck? Not an issue. That's what he told me. Then we put the implants in, and like he said, he had no pain that day. He didn't even know we did it. <laughs> Dr. Gonzalez, I have to tell you, when I, when I first showed up today, you know, I'd heard a lot about you. Um, I was a little skeptic because obviously everybody says that they can do everything and they can do all kinds of stuff. But after interviewing your patients, they all tell the same story. Yeah. They were drug here, one gentleman cried, they, and then they all say they have no recollection of the surgery, they have the best teeth, they, have, you know, they had incredible smiles today. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you learn over time, how to deal with those people? I mean, some of these people's anxiety was severe. Some even were sent to you by other dentists. Is that, is that something that you've, over time, learned to deal with and learned to comfort? Well, well yes, Mike. Uh, we've geared our practice in that direction where we deal with mainly the high fear patients. Uh, and because of that, you know, we've learned that uh, there's certain handling techniques that's best to, you know, utilize with them. You know, you just have to take like a hands-off approach the first time. And, and, you know, when they're confident. He said the first time, they all told me that the first time they came in, no pressure, right. didn't poke them, didn't stick anything in their mouth, that you just sat and talked to them, that you just allowed them to become comfortable with you. Is that something you do with everybody? Uh, especially our high fear patients, yes, we, we talk to them first. We don't just jump in and start working on them. We, we come in, we want to find out why they're here, what their needs are. And if they're high fear patients, sometimes we don't even take x-rays the first visit. And we just fill everybody out and to find out where, where we're going to be have going. You, have you found, and, and, and I'm kind of asking this off the cuff because I met people today that had teeth that were, well, by most estimations, beyond help. I met a gentleman that came here from Bermuda, 3,000 miles away to have you work on, on their teeth. Do you find that, that those type of people really, they're out there, but they're just, they're so afraid that their fears are mobilizing to them? Not only them, but there's a lot of other people just like them out there that their fear it keeps them from coming to the dentist. And these are people, not only just the, the, the purely the dentistry part, but you had ladies that you helped with headaches. Right. You had a gentleman that was supposed to have his neck worked on. You, you call it, I, I don't know what you call it, you know, extra benefits or whatever. Right. Do you see those benefits in a lot of people? Do you have a lot of people that, you know, get rid of their headaches, get rid of their back pain, feel better or healthier? One lady was going to the doctor every two weeks. She was sick right. from the infection. Do you think that people just don't realize how bad your dental you know, health can affect your body? Oh, definitely. I, I see this all the time. A lot of times they don't associate these problems with something in their mouth. They think it's something else. Well, I want to tell you, I look in a lot of people's mouths and I visit with a lot of dentists. And what I saw here today was absolutely incredible. Hopefully you'll let me come back in a year or so and see how we're doing. You've been watching Medical News Network. I'm Mike Wigenstein. For further information on this subject or to find out how to become a guest on our show, please visit our website at medicalnewsnetwork.info. Until next time, I wish you good health. Thank you, Mike.